Okay, let's begin with some very basic independent problems. These are classic MCAT type problems taken from the physics section on MCATprep.com. I will read the problem to you or you can mute the volume. Then you will have 30 seconds to answer the question. Please note, on the MCAT you will have over a minute to answer each question, but that includes time to read the passage. If you need scratch paper to work out the problem, please pause this video now and prepare. Question 1. So we have a diagram. Here's V, the voltage for the battery. We have a wire. We have resistors R1, R2, and we have the resistor R3 here. The values are R1, 3 ohms, R2, 1.5 ohms, R3, 1 ohm. Question. Which of the following correctly describes the positive currents I1, I2, and I3 passing through R1, R2, and R3 respectively? You have 30 seconds. Begin now. Time. Okay, so which of the following correctly describes the positive currents I1, I2, and I3 passing through R1, R2, and R3 respectively? And yes, you can highlight on the computer-based MCAT. So, we have the battery, positive current coming from the positive terminal, going through R3, the resistor, coming to the junction, dividing into R1, and then current going into R2. So, let's follow the actual currents. Because they use the word respectively, it means that the current coming in this wire emanating from the positive terminal of the battery will be current I3 going through R3. Then, coming along here, again, we still have I3. Hitting this junction, I3 divides into I1 going through R1, and I2 going through R2. So clearly, I3 must equal I1 plus I2. So that's answer choice A. We can test proof our answer by using what we just learned in electricity, which is Kirchhoff's first law, which is the sum of current is equal to zero at a junction. We can define our junction as junction green. And so we, right here is the junction that we're talking about. If we define all currents coming into the junction as positive, all currents leaving the junction of negative, then we have I3 coming into the junction, positive, minus I1, which is leaving the junction, so it's negative, minus I2, which is leaving the junction and negative. That must equal zero according to Kirchhoff's first law. So therefore, I3 must equal to I1 plus I2, which is answer choice A. So this is a very basic question. There is no reason to get this one wrong. Let's move on to the next question. Question 2. If a 1 ampere current passes through R1, what is the current in R2? Keep in mind from question 1 that R1 is 3 ohms, R2 1.5 ohms, R3 is 1 ohm. You'll have 30 seconds, but if you need more time, press pause. Begin now. Okay, let's attack the problem. A 1 ampere current passes through R1. What is the current in R2? So, in physics, when you're attacking, there are two things you want to keep in mind. Equations or diagrams, as much as possible. You want to rely on this. So, 
Let's draw a diagram which emphasizes the relationship with R1 and R2 as shown in the previous problem. So we have the resistor on this side, uh, which is R1. We have the resistor on the other side, which is R2. And uh, so this is the relationship that they gave us in question number one. So here's R1 and here's R2. So what do we have here? We have a small loop and we have the current coming in here, which we defined as I3, I1 going through R1 and I2 going through R2. And so uh, we have a little loop here, an enclosed area of wire. We just need to define our directions. We can define it in any way you want, clockwise, counterclockwise, positive, negative, whatever. So let's define moving in the clockwise direction as being the positive direction for current. So clockwise will be positive for current. We know we have I1 going up, I2 is going up, but it's opposite to the direction that we're defining as the positive direction of current. So we use Kirchhoff's second law, which is the sum of voltage changes is equal to zero in a loop. What are the voltage changes? Well, V is equal to IR. So we have I1, R1, positive, negative I2, R2, equal to zero. I1 is positive because it's in the direction of the positive flow. I2 is negative because it's in the direction opposite to direction of flow. So now I've isolated for I2, which is, of course, the current going through R2. And we have all the values. I1 is 1, R1 is 3, R2 is 1.5. So we get two amperes as our answer. So very straightforward problem, direct application of Kirchhoff's second law. And now we just have to test proof the answer. Consider this. Does current like resistance? Of course not. Resistance resists the flow of charge or current. So R1 is twice the resistance of R2. So we should not be surprised that the current in R2 is twice the current in R1 in this simple loop.